All right, so this is a tutorial on how to make depth with your 2D games. So um, ignore the fact that my character looks sort of like Mario with his um, perspective. The tree's kind of the perspective we're shooting for. So if you look at the Mario, he's it's a perfect side view. This tree's kind of like a top-down view. You can see a little bit of depth going on there. So if you think about Pokemon, you can walk behind buildings and stuff in Pokemon. I believe you can, right? You can walk behind things in Pokemon. Stuff can go in front of you. Like the bushes, for example. Anyway, so we're going to be trying to fix that issue. The issue right now is that if I move my character, he cuts behind this. How, so how do we get the game to automatically know how to do fix this issue for all objects in, in the game? And the way we do that is we create a script called a depth script. Um, and what that script is going to do, I'll show you in a little bit here. First, we're going to make some uh, colliders, though. We do need to make the tree look. We're gonna add a. Is it called a polygon collider? Is that the one I use that just auto fit? That's pretty sick. I don't know if that's new or not, but it's cool that it auto fits. So I'm gonna use a polygon collider for the tree. You can use any collider you want. Do I have to use all these points? I only need like a couple points. Paths. Oh, Jesus. I can't even edit them. Anyway. Cool. Well, this isn't necessary, but so these points are going to just match up with um, where, because uh, th this this collider I'm making is not going to be a physical collider. This is going to be just a trigger. So we'll set that in just a little here. But these points are going to match up with where I want um, the player to have to intersect with before this tree becomes transparent. So we're done with that. This needs to be a trigger. Set it to a trigger. Now we're going to add a 2D box collider, and we're going to edit that as well. So that needs to be shrunk down quite a bit, and just put that there. This is going to be where the player collides with the tree. So this base is on the ground, so I want this character of mine to collide when his feet try to walk through this piece on the ground. So we're going to add a box collider on him. We're going to edit that as well. And he's terribly designed perspective-wise. He should be from a slight above view, actually. But we're going to pretend that the art on this is actually pretty good. So put a box on around his feet. And we need to give him a rigid body, too, so that he can collide with things. We also don't want him to rotate. And gravity doesn't need to affect him. Classic stuff here. OK. So, let's go to our depth script and start fixing stuff. Uh, do I have this all prepped? This should be correct. I think that's right. I don't think I need to change anything else here. So, I'm going to make a depth script. Void awake. Uh, okay, so what kind of variables do we need? Well, we need to grab our sprite renderer so we can change the transparency and the order of... Oopsies. I'm starting to name it already. It's pretty early, so I'm kind of like dead inside here. When the object wakes up, we'll just set our temp rend to get component. So it only does it once. Did I put I don't think I have to put this. I don't even think will that even work if I put this? Does that matter? I don't need it, but so I'm going to get rid of it. And what else do we need? We need a timer, which is a float. Oopsies. Oh my god, it is early. Jesus. We're going to set it to three, an arbitrary number. What that stands for is um, the amount of time I want to pass before an object becomes no longer transparent and goes back to its default coloring. Uh, you can make variables for that number just so that you can easily modify it. We could also make a variable for how transparent we want objects to be, but um, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to skip all that because it's not necessary. And this is perfect the way it is. So what we want is we want to first sort our objects. So let's discuss one more time what's going on with these objects. Let me just duplicate this tree a few times and show you one of the, the most annoying issues. So 
that looks pretty good. Let's put it over there. Let's duplicate it again. So far, so good. Oh, that's that's pretty fucked. All right, this is starting to look like a lot of mayhem here. So you can see that objects don't just automatically sort themselves. So you can obviously fix that in here, but what about moving objects? So our player, for example. So we're going to fix that by one line of code. Very easy to do. We're going to say in the update, we're going to go with temp rend dot oopsies, sorting order. And it's going to equal an integer because sorting orders are layered like someone on layer zero or someone on or sorting order zero gets drawn behind someone who's sorting order one. So it's going to, we need to get the position of the object that is being sorted and we're going to change it to from a world to screen point. Um, and the point that we're looking at is this object that the script is attached to. We're looking at its transform position and in particular we're sorting by the Y value. So the higher up an object is on in the world the um, farther back it gets drawn. So in order if we keep it like this it'll actually be reversed. So we want it times it by negative one. <clears throat> Def timer is never used. Yeah I know that's okay. So let's see what this one line of code does. See if it fixes it. We're going to create one more tree here and a second tree. We're just going to see how this looks when we hit play. It's not going to look any different, I don't think, because I forgot to add the script to this, these objects, which I could have probably just added it to the first one and then duplicated, but look at that. So there we go. They all look pretty good, huh? Actually, let's go to my player and put it on him too. And then I'll move him around and you'll see what I mean by so player comes out oh look at that in front of the tree oh behind the tree not bad in front of this back tree kinda hard to tell uh, probably over here would be okay so in front of one tree and behind the other so it's gonna fix this pretty easily um, and that's just it going through and move checking the character's Y position and just setting a sorting order for it so if you look at this number here order and layer which is apparently not changing ever I don't know why isn't this supposed to change like as I go the fuck yeah I guess it doesn't change update in the inspector it's weird maybe that's only on draw well, that's what's basically changing so let's fix the transparency issue because when we walk behind trees we don't want to lose side of our character or <coughs> not see that there's an enemy attacking us. So to do that, another simple simple piece of code. This is why we made all the colliders by the way. So on trigger stay 2D. We're gonna grab a collider 2D as well called other yeah most people just say other so we'll do it too. Uh, oh we need a pool. This is going to be a public pool because we're going to change it for our player pretty much only. You could mess with or around with pools if you want very specific transparency rules, but right now the transparency rule I want is if it's a player that you're colliding with and you yourself are not a player, then turn transparent. So, so I need to set that. Yep. Yeah. All right on trigger stay so if mm, is player if we are a player ourselves if we are not a player let's just say is false then I don't know why I was gonna do that and the other object dot get component depth dot is player I'm not checking if they have the depth, which you might want to do if you don't put depth on all of your objects that have colliders. But in this case, we don't need to. Normally, you would say if the other component exists on that object, then check. 
uh, this variable. Otherwise, you'd run into some errors. Um, so if we are not a player and the other guy we're hitting is a player, uh, then we're going to turn ourselves temp uh, temporarily transparent. So we're going to change our color, but we're only going to change the alpha aspect of the color. So we're going to create a new color. We could create this color at the start and just keep it forever, but I'm not too worried about optimizing this like 100%, so it's no big deal. We still don't use the timer. We'll get around to that. So if we collide with a player, we do need to reset our timer to three. We need to keep resetting it as long as we're, we keep colliding with the player. <clears throat> now during the update, what we're going to do is if our timer is less than or equal to zero, so if we've timed out, then we can reset our color back to what it was. So basically, oops, this is confusing because I don't have this on here. Timer minus equals time dot delta time. So subtract the time that's passed from our timer every update. That way, once three seconds have passed, then we can, well, we can copy and paste this up here for one. And we'll change this, the alpha back to its original value, which is, this is just whatever the, you imported it as, or whatever it was originally. That's, that's what you got there. <coughs> um... That should be good. I don't think I need to reset. Yeah, actually, this should be three. Otherwise, it'll just count down negative forever. And if you left the game on long enough, you could get some sort of weird shit going on. I think that's it. Let's test this. How many lines do we have? One, two, one, two. I don't know if they count these, but how many real lines do we write? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. To get a flawless, it's not flawless, but it's close to flawless system. Player has the depth script on it. Check it as player. Duplicate a few more beautiful trees. Make a really nice environment here. This is my favorite part right here. Is that you don't have to sort any of this shit out by hand. It just does it. Well, that was trippy. Anyway. God, it is fucking early. So we're behind this tree. Goes transparent. And as we walk behind the trees, it actually kind of makes it a lot easier to navigate because we can somewhat see the trees. Um, yeah, so it just it allows you to see where the hell you're going when walking behind this kind of shit. And it times out pretty quick. You could have it go slower. Especially for, like, if you're over here and you're fighting a guy here, you might want the timer to be a little bit quicker. You could also have the system... Uh, work in the sense that you give this player here so what I could do like if you want the player to actually reveal a larger area but you don't want to change this hitbox I think you could do this let me try it I've actually this is you're seeing revolutionary stuff here collider so basically we make a trigger collider on the player and it's kind of like the player's view window. This is what I'm 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 visualizing here that this guy can see this far out in both directions. So I think now, yeah. So now he's got like kind of like a line of sight. So pretty basic shit. But yeah, so that, there you go, guys. Pretty easy to pull off. I really wish I would have picked a better looking sprite. This guy fucking sucks. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Alright. 